Hello, this is Daily 75 Games. You're watching another Project 1999 EverQuest guide on, this time it's Kaladim. And here's the entrance in all its glory. I showed this uh, briefly. Craig, check running by me. I'm in the outside newbie area, so for a lot of the quests that'll be in this video, this will be the area to go get them. But not all. Like the Crushbone Belts, which is what, uh, probably one of the most popular quests on the, on the whole continent. So we're entering, entering, pardon me, entering inside, still uh, getting over the flu. Not perfect yet, but I feel quite a bit stronger now. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I don't really think it's easy to get lost in here. Uh, I think it's easier to find your way around than parts of uh, Akanon. But it's still, you, you could, Ixar, <laughs> Ixar is our kill on sight. Uh, it's still easier if you ask me to find your way around. You just have to get used to it, like any city. I don't think there's really any city that's, you just walk in and find anywhere. I mean, they don't give you a mini-map for you to find your way around, or an in-game map. So, of course, uh, every city is going to have, uh, it's going to prevent, or present you with obstacles. So here's the, the Priest of Discord at the beginning. Lots of guards, so yeah, they're all level 50 guards. So I'm gonna go right here and see. I really like how it's all dwarf sized, it's just awesome if you ask me. So we are inside the mountain right now, kind of like Akanon in a way, but um, there's nothing really that special here. I mean, there's a kiln and pottery wheel, but uh, so I'll keep going and this this way leads to North Caledon. We're currently in South Caledon. And this way, you wouldn't know it, there's no signs or anything like that, but this is the way to the palace. And there's guards all over the place. And we'll get to meet the king, I think. Yep, King Kaz Kazan Stormhammer. Look at his chair, <laughs> encrusted with jewels. And he's not talking back. He looks like just any regular Joe Blow dwarf. There's not a crown or any kind of elaborate armor on him. <laughs> well, maybe he's a double, who knows. But uh, I don't think that there's anything special behind here. It looks like there's some possibly gold-plated uh, baseboards. But <laughs> oh, is this this must be the vault, which they allow me to. They allow a rogue to walk freely into. <laughs> well, there's a guard there watching me, but uh, I'm pretty quick with my deft hands. So if I uh, if I had the chance, I definitely would have pilfered some jewelry there, some gems. Okay, so let's go back. Oops, this is not a pathway back. Oh, okay. Uh, some bad lag. I still have my sow on from the previous video where the uh, druid... Where in the heck? I think I came from over here. The druid gave me the sow. I think there's like eight minutes left. Yeah, eight minutes. Okay, so we're going to go to the western part of South Caledon. Now, of course, here is one of the... Uh, the bards that give you mail that you can take. I think this one goes everything except for in um, the Wood Elf City. Everything goes to the Wood Elf City on this continent. The Wood Elf City one, uh, Kelethan, that goes to Freeport. Okay, so this apparently is an arena, but it's not a PvP arena, so what's the point of it? I don't know. That's a really small arena. I mean, I know dwarves are short, but they need some more room than that. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, this is one of the most uh, important places to go to. I think, is this the Paladin Guild? Sure, I'm looking at the map here. Uh, I think I wrote over the damn thing. Well, wherever it is, this is the Paladin. Oh, it's the Warrior's Guild, with merchants selling various weapons. So yeah, this is the, the Warrior's Guild. Guy's last name is Orc Slicer. Well, they don't have the problems with the orcs that the elves do. So, and uh, remember this guy for later because he's probably one of the most popular NPCs in the game, actually. Canlo Newsback, Newsback. Okay, so he's in the Warriors Guild. I thought he was in the Paladins Guild, so it's not that hard to find him, actually. Okay, so let's continue on. I think, yeah, I like to get stuck on my way out. Red Fist Metal. So obviously there's a, you can do a bit of forging here. 
Storm Guard Forge. I think that that's the uh, the racial forge for the dwarves. But you know what? I I'm not sure if they sell ore in this zone or even um, uh, molds. So uh, there's really not much of a point then, uh, other than coming out to the uh, racial forge, because there's uh, other forges in the in the uh, game. Okay, so, or sorry, in Kaladim. Okay, so we hit here. I need to go back, and then I need to go north. Now this is going to take me into northern Kaladim. So it's separated by a screen that you have to load or go through to load. Okay, so North Caledon. Now there's actual mines inside. I think it's in Northern Caledon. Yeah, here's the beginning of the mines. The dead half elf over there. I don't know how he died. Phil Bus is the worst corpse. Now, I always see dead rogues around here. Apparently, there's a quest where they have to pickpocket this guy or something like that. And I've seen so many dead rogues. There's one guy I kept on doing over and over again. He had probably had literally like 50 corpses around here. It was kind of ridiculous, actually. But uh, <laughs> they're almost like piled on top of each other. He couldn't really do it. But uh, anyways, here's the... Uh, next to the mine is... Whoa, whoa, getting turned around. Is the vault... Or the bank. Change. Okay. Done. Everybody needs to know where the bank is. There's a vendor right next to it. Which is always helpful. Okay, so. From here. Uh, I'm looking at the map. I think I do go this way. The cleric guild is supposedly... It's a bit of a windy trip get there. It's supposed to be at the end here. That's kind of neat. Writing on the walls. Dwarven writing. So this is the Cleric Guild, I take it. You put windows in some of these buildings. But then they're dwarves, so... Oh, there is a window. <laughs> okay, so this is the Cleric Guild. It's kind of neat, actually. There's a lot of uh, NPCs here. I'm sure what's behind... Whoa. He's part of the cleric. I'm not a cleric, so he's telling me to be gone. So that's about it. Uh, I will be going over quests before the video is done. It's not really... It's not that large of a, a city, to tell you the truth. I think there's only one other place. Well, there's a couple other places for me to show you. But with Sal, I mean, everything goes really fast. So, uh, it's more of a windy route to go to the eastern part of northern Caledon. But this is where people, and this is where I find people often come to create uh, banded or whatever else they're working on, as long as it's not the racial forge. Because I think that there is a uh, ore vendor, and they may sell molds inside there in the Everhot Forge. And there is a vendor nearby for ore. You'd have to look it up specifically on the wiki. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been here a few times and people were making uh, banded for me. Okay, so continuing onward. Oh, no, we went the wrong way. We're going south because there's not supposed to be a load. I see you on the map where I went wrong. Let's go back. And funny enough, there is a rogue guild in Kaladim, but it is not on the map location key. And it's not on the map that I can see anywhere. Which means that they've hidden it for some reason. There is a rogue quest or two. I think I have two that I'll be showing. I don't have to hunt them down to find out where they are. Okay, so this is the way I was meaning to go. Trantor Everhot. Is that his forge over there? Ooh, mushroom garden. Mushroom farm. Grey Bloom Farms cool, but we need to get past here in some way. Hopefully I don't need to swim. No. Uh, well, the map... Oh, you know where it was? I think it was behind the Cleric Guild. The map makes it look like this is... Uh, <laughs> the Paladin Guild is, is just north of here. But yeah, this is... Uh, if, if you're into brewing, this is the place to go. There's 
It says the brew barrel inside and oven outside. Yeah, there's the oven. Cooking and brewing right here using mushrooms. Okay, so back to the cleric guild then. Yeah, I wish it would, on the map, it would say to cleric guild and it doesn't say anything because it cuts it off behind the guild. I was wondering why it did that on the map. Now I know why. Well, at least I'm moving fast. Okay, so now we need to find our way past this. Here we go. So this must be the Paladin Guild. Okay. There's a way back here. Do do Nani Chestire. Okay, so is this it? I guess this that looks Paladinish. I uh, know I, I I'm gonna guess that the rogues are somehow like maybe they're even here or something. I don't know. They're probably hiding themselves. The guy's name is Bumley. Okay, where are all the NPCs for the paladins? Obviously not this way. Nope. Where are you hiding, guys? Oh, weird. Well, who is this guy for? Uh, he says, you're not a member of the paladin class. So he's a paladin trainer. Oh, there's a guy up there. How do you get in there? Hopefully you don't have to be a dwarf to get up there. Oh. That's the way I came in. So she's selling things. She's a vendor. Oh, my, my sow's gone. Well, at least I got around almost all of Kaladim. I think it's this way. Um, Deter Nightseer, I take it he is probably the leader of the paladins. Well, you guys aren't as fancy and cool as I thought you'd be. Especially after seeing the cleric guild. But where the heck are the rogues? Seriously, I, I have no idea. I'm going to have to find them. I've got a location for them, but... Yeah, they're all telling me to get out of here because I'm not a paladin. All right, then. Well, that's basically all of Kaladim. Um, there were the mines I, sh I went by and I showed you. And there's a couple quests that I have for you to go into there as well. Newbie quests. So, I mean, I, I like to do all the newbie quests up to and including level 5 just to help out anybody that wants to start out. And that's what I do when I start out. Like, say, in Niriak, when I, I started out with my cleric, um, I went in and made a note of all the the quests that I could do and it gives me give me something to do for the first five six seven eight levels and uh something to aim for because I'm so used to that with modern MMOs where EverQuest um uh, for the most part just most people run around and kill things instead of working on quests or, or stuff like that but uh it gives, gives something to aim for and uh, it makes it just makes it more makes me want to keep playing it actually so it helps me out mentally so all right so I'm going to go over the history and then we'll show the map, and then afterwards we'll go over the quests. Kaladim is the underground city of the dwarves of Norath. A huge carved statue of a dwarf marks the entrance of their city into the rugged Butcher Block Mountains. Surrounding areas. Butcher Block Mountains is a vast expanse of rough terrain on the north end of which lies Kaladim. The dwarves have guard stations scattered throughout the mountains, but they have been unable to claim the region for their own, and many dangerous monsters still wander around freely. Traveling to and from Kaladim. Kaladim's entrance is along the northern border of the Butcher Block Mountains. To the west of this entrance lies a port where the dock from the continent of Antonica arrives, taking travelers to and from Freeport. Far in the other direction, through the mountain passes, lies the entrance to the forests of the elves, Greater Fadark. To the south lies the narrow pass to Dagnor's Cauldron. History From the time of Dagnor Butcherblock, the first dwarven king, before the Elven Empire was established in the east, the dwarves thrived in the mountains to the west, surrounding the forest presently known as the Lesser Fadark. The dwarves settled into the jagged cliffs of what is known as the Butcherblock Mountains, and there established their golden kingdom of Kaladim, the Forge of Narath. 
in the rule of Grimly Fireforge, the twelfth dwarven king, nearby ogres grew envious of the gold-rich mountains mines and the stone-cutting skills of the Caledum kingdom. This resulted in an intense racial hatred and many small fights occurred between the two kingdoms. In the middle of the Second Age, with the Elven Wars raging to the east, the Dwarven nation was beset with an unanticipated and bloody war of their own when the Ogres took advantage of the situation in the east by launching a campaign against the Kingdom of Caledum, knowing the Elves could not afford to lend aid to the Dwarves. The fifth warlord of the Wrath... Oh, sorry, the Rakthokian kingdom believed the key to annihilating the dwarves was through destroying the trading centers and mining villages scattered throughout the northern butcher blocks. He marched his army of ogres and orcish slaves west across the hills of Shade directly to the north without fear of elven intervention. The dwarves still retell the horrible tales of the first ogre attacks. The dwarves were unprepared to meet such an unanticipated invasion force, and the peaceful outlying cities of northern Caledon were overrun in the opening days of the war. Ogre warriors showed no mercy, killing hundreds of dwarves. No quarter was shown for women or children, for old or infirm. The bloodthirsty ogres and their orcish slaves were thorough in their destruction. To this day, very few hamlets outside of the, the capital of Caledum can be found. While the vile warlord's army reveled in its wicked deeds, dawdling over the eradication of the dwarves outside the gates of Caledum, King Grimly was not lying by idly. He rapidly gathered a defense of stalwart miners and axemen, train warriors, and the men and William of Brel Cyrillus' temples. Anyone strong enough to lift an axe, sword, or pick was fitted to meet the invaders. Within days of first hearing word of the threat to Caledum, Grimly was prepared to make his wrath known. On Crackthorn Ridge, just south of the gates of Caledum, the largest force of dwarves ever assembled was ready to meet the invaders, their king at the fore. It was now the ogre's turn for surprise. The fighting on the ridge was savage and brutal, and the ogres were forced to retreat to more favorable ground. The ogre army was pushed back into the hills of shade and the dwarves in close pursuit. With the dwarves in close pursuit. Unnoticed by, Rakthor by Rakthokian horde, King Grimly sent a small band of seasoned warriors to the south and east to see what they could uh, see of the enemy. Near the edge of the Fadark, they observed a remaining fighting reserve of the Ogre army guarding the enemy's southern flank. This reserve, however large and potentially capable of swinging the war back in the favor of the Ogres, was populated primarily with orcs. For the only time in known history, dwarves and orcs entered into an alliance of sorts. Appealing to the innate cowardice of the orcs, Grimly's representatives convinced the orcs to slink into the wilder lands of Fadwar, avoiding the risks of battle and a continued life at the feet of the ogres. The dwarves promised the orcish slaves they would leave them to their new freedom if the orcs would discontinue fighting for their masters. Thus, the orcish slaves retreated from Lesser Fadark to the east, leaving the ogres' southern flank wide open to an amassing second force of dwarves. Caught between the two pincers of the dwarven army, the ogres were decimated. The warlord fled with his few remaining soldiers to the south, escaping Fadwar altogether. Kaladin was safe once again. As an historical side note, it is significant to briefly mention here that the founding of Crushbone, while the dwarves intended to keep their pact with the orcs, one group of orcs failed to keep their end of the agreement. A third of the freed orcs opted to settle much too close to the civilized lands of Fadwar, founding Crushbone. The dwarves felt was a breaking of the limited alliance, reigniting the feud between the dwarves and the orcs. Accepting their role in loosing the orcs on nearby Kelethin, the kingdom of Kaladin maintains a bounty on the orcs of Crushbone. In more recent times, the local papers and bar talk are abuzz with the official trading embargo King Stormhammer has placed on Kanos, stemming from a case of discrimination against dwarves by the tavern known as the Lion's Maid in the western Antonican city. The dwarven king has called for a halt to trade until an apology is made by the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, local color places. This town is completely carved out of the mountains and winds up and winds its way ever deeper. The guilds have each carved their own niches into several different areas of the caverns, forming a network of warrens that all dwarves call home. The people, the dwarvens, the dwarves wander throughout their town, busy on business and protecting their community from the pressures outside. Many of the strongest warriors of the land, as well as its most devout, hail from these halls, and the inhabitants carry themselves with pride because of it. You're looking at South Caledum. Number one is Tanned Assets, merchant selling small leather armor. Number two, Iron Toes Eats, home of Tumpy Iron Toe, merchant selling alcohol and meat pies. Three, Staff and Spear. 
Merchant Selling Swords, Didix Stormhammer, and Fletching Supplies, Alinari Stormhammer. Number four is Red Fist Metals, Merchant Selling Small Shields and Weapons of All Types, Forge and Stormguard, Forge Outside. Five is the Arena, not PvP. Number six is Pub Cal, Merchant Selling Alcohol, Hanamath and Dark, Hanamath Dark Foam and Dura Dark Foam, Brew Barrel Bard Outside. Number seven is Warriors Guilds with Merchants Selling Various Weapons. Eight is the Priest of Discord. Nine is the Merchant Selling Potions and Crystals. Ten is the Merchant Selling Bags, Pottery Wheel and Kiln Outside. Eleven is Gertha's Wear with Merchant Selling Small Boots, Cloth, Armor, Pottery Supplies and Oven Outside. Number twelve is Castle, Home of the King. Now on to North Caledum. Number one is the Merchant Selling Gems. Two is Merchant Selling Brillium Ore. Sorry, that's two separate things. Brillium and ore, smithy hammers, sharpening stones. Number three is the Cleric Guild, merchants selling blunt weapons, food, and good merchants, goods merchants outside. Four is Watts Bones, treasure and assay office, bank, merchants who sell throwing weapons, Kafia, rat's bone, mining supplies and boxes, Kadic, Nork hitter, and rogue guild members outside. Number five is the Pottery Wheel and Kin. Number six is Empty Hut, seven's Empty Hut. Number 8 is Everhot Forge, merchant selling blunt and sharp weapons, small chain and plate armor, small plate and shield molds, weapon molds, Bindani Everhot, jewelry, metal and rare gems, forge outside. Number 9 is the Grey Bloom Farms, merchant selling grapes, brew barrel inside, oven outside. And number 10 is Paladin Guild. Note that there is a merchant who sells ore located at approximately is positive 750 and positive 200 on the map. Okay, so the first person we're going to start out with is the probably one of the most famous person in the whole continent for the quests that you can do. Now, the wiki has it listed as in North Caledon, and that's incorrect. He's actually in South Caledon. He's in the Warrior Guild, and I'm, that's where, right where I am. And if I could... See, oh, uh, Crushbone Belts is the name of the quest. It's Canlo Newsback. Uh, minimum level is 1+. plus. So let's go over it. Uh, notes, this is one of the most popular quests in Fedor because if you have enough belts and are low enough in level, you can increase your level several times. Players often buy Crushbone belts for one plat per belt. Uh, I, When I was playing, buying some of them, they were going for three. So that has increased. I think it's it decreased down to about two now. But it might have changed. This is going back a few months. Um, be careful not to hand in belts while other players are doing the same. Often Canlo will take both sets of belts and not reward any experience, faction, or items. Always hand in two or four at a time. As an Ixar Necro, my parser counted 600 plus rep gains by killing orcs till I hit. Threatening with Stormguard. A hundred-ish more and you will be dubious and can do the quest. Okay, so 600 rep, rep, killing 600 orcs to get to threatening from, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, scowling. That's somebody who put that note in there on the wiki, so it's kind of, I mean, you're probably looking at about a more than a thousand, maybe around 1,500 before you can get to dubious and uh, start doing the quest. And this is what a lot of people do. Uh, they do it for faction and uh, experience. Probably mostly experience, but some can do it for faction. This quest lowers faction with ogre warriors, take note. So, reward is small coin, newbie armor, and a lot of experience for a low-level quest. I, I did a video quite a while back. I think it was this, with this character here, Tekken, that I was around... I think I gained a level and a half, or two levels, and I had about 40 belts. And I was probably around level 10 when I did it, and I got up to level 12, so it was kind of neat. Now, uh, from here... Let's see, that's North Caledon. I have it all printed out, actually. So, so we're still in South Caledon. Uh, Warrior Guild Master, we need to find him, and I will be right back. Okay, so there's two quests here with uh, Benno Targnar Targnarl. Yeah, he is, uh, I don't think it's for, it's for all classes, but starts, the first one is level one. Um, he's the guild, war he's the Warrior Guild Master, it says, but you wouldn't know by looking at him, so... Uh, you hand in four giant rat pelts from the rats in the Caledon Mines, and I, I um, already went and showed you me killing one of them. And reward is faction, experience, and three gold. And then there's the knight's card, knight card quest with the same guy. Minimum level four. 
So he says, must you know everyone's business? Hmm, maybe you can be of assistance. You see, I have been instructed by Furtog to tend to a matter of extreme urgency, which is keeping me from clearing the minds of rats. Will you assist and exterminate the rats? Hand in scrap metal, identifies as scrap metal cleaner 7, dropped by cleaner 7. Now apparently that's in the mine somewhere. I think it wanders up to the bank and back into the mines. You'd have to t take a look for it. If you can't find it, then just... Uh, Look on the wiki for it. The reward is faction, experience, six copper, and a night card that you can hand into a dwarf named Doran Vargnas in the Ocean of Tears on Sister Island. He gives you an item for the card which ranges from cloth to some pretty nice armor pieces such as blackened and bronze and even dwarven mail as well as weapons. So here's Bizar Bloodforge. The last fellow actually was a guildmaster. I guess there isn't uh, the guild leader. Uh, but this is him, and apparently he wanders. So for minimum level 5, for all classes, get 4 runny-eyed war beads and turn them in for faction and experience. Now, you have to get outside the city for this, so he wanders over to here, I guess. To, maybe this is his little room. And uh, it's not the only one. There's also another one for the rogues. the same exact thing for those runny-eyed beads. And uh, as, as you saw earlier when I was uh, running around... Uh, going over the city's, uh, the wiki story. Um, right outside the, the bank is where all the rogues are. I didn't even know that was them. I just thought there was a bunch of NPCs standing there for quest NPCs. But they're rogue trainers, as you, as you saw. Okay, so now we're going to go into North Caledon to see the rogues, actually. Right outside the mines is the bank over there. Now let's go right into the beginning part and find Diggins, who's right here. Now, he gives a, I think it's a simple quest, uh, minimum level one. Oh, no, it's the same thing. It's the uh, four runny-eyed war beads and turn them in for faction, four silver and a rusty weapon from Diggins. Now, uh, let's go to the next one. I think it's just up, back up by the bank. Yeah, so I guess they each give different sort of factions, so obviously one will be with the, with the rogues and the other one will be for the warriors. And uh, if you're... A Dwarven Rogue, or any Rogue, is, might be the better choice to go to the Rogues, I would think. So let's see, his name is Jeet. Hey Jeet, what business do you have here? This is, this here is the mine, and that means if you ain't a member of Miner's Guild 628, you'd best be moving on. Okay, so he gives a quest. Uh, Jeet, one of the Rogue trainers in Kaladim next to the bank, asks that you do a special task of ridding him of that Inferno Cleaner, and says he will give you a Miner's Cap if you do it. The cleaner clockwork is sometimes found near the bank in Caledon. Kill it and return the pieces for your minor cap to three, six to eight. Only wearable by dwarven rogues. Uh, it's, I think it's like three AC to. Uh, oh, Diggins wanders up here. I thought I saw him up here. Two charisma. So then we're cleric and paladin guilds are the only ones left, I think. So let's move on. Inside the cleric guild is. Nutal Malfoot. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of other quests going up to various levels beyond what I'm uh, showing here. So, just look up, look it up in the wiki. Now, this guy offers... Uh, it's a bone... No, not bone chips. He's... Yeah, it's cleric only, I think. Minimum level 3. Hand in 4 skunk scent glands. Reward is faction, experience 5 silver, and 1 of 5 cleric spells. Which is very handy. For someone who has no money and they're just starting out. And that's basically what I do a lot of these quests for. It's not just uh, something to keep you busy or to gain a level. But uh, if you've never done any of these, if you've never played the game or just don't have any other characters and you're starting, coming back to start on Project 99 EverQuest, then this, is, this should help you out, I think. Hopefully. Now we need to go, I think the last two or inside the Paladin's Guild. Now we need to hunt down who it is. Well, here he is. Right here. This is uh, the beginning of the Paladin Guild. Now, Gunlock Jure. He, uh, Bone Chips. He wants Bone Chips. You must have at least a different faction to do the quest. I'm indifferent. Turn in four Bone Chips, unstacked. You will receive a random minor item, some silver, some copper, and faction, which is probably the point of the quest for most people. And for the final guy, uh, I think I've seen him before. His name is Bumley. Uh, 
Where are you, Bumley? There he is. Bumley Reminger. Okay, so what does he want? Well, it's uh, Aviac Chicks. Hand in four Aviac Chick Talons. Reward small patchwork armor. And those are, of course, right outside the newbie area. So are the skunks from the cleric area. I killed one in my last video. I don't know if I, it was actually on the video or not. But uh, when I was out there, I did kill one. They're low level, I think, below five And uh, for the skunks. Aviac Chicks, I assume they're five and under as well. And uh, just keep in mind, if you do plan on camping Aviac City, the Aviac Chicks do give you bad faction with Aviacs. Alright, so I think that that's everything I needed to show you guys in all Caledon. As Again, I mean, it's fun to go through it. And um, it, this video I don't think will be as long as the Akanon one. That, was, that had a long history. It was like five pages of reading for me. This one's only just two, just over two pages. I'm not sure who writes these. I think it's different from each one. Some of them are old stories that originally came with the game, and some of them are just uh, write-ups by people, probably either on the wiki or they got it from somewhere on the, the internet at some point. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Going to end the video right here, and we'll see you next time.